it's a good example of something that Ayn Rand talks about, which is how altruism unleashes worse evils. So the person who's a compromiser or the middle of the rotor doesn't really want to push hard. The people who are telling you, oh, you need to have a ceasefire, you need to have more stringent rules of war, you need to be concerned with humanitarian issues and, and feeding the Palestinians, all of that, I think, is coming from an altruistic base. This idea of mor morality is defined by self-sacrifice and the, the, the strong have to sacrifice for the weak and how could you not be concerned with the Palestinians? All of that is, I think, in part creating cover for the people who are pretending to be pro-Palestinians but actually anti-Israel. And I think that's an important differentiation that is lost. I say that the, I agree with the, the middle of the road of kind of commentators are in some ways worse because they should know better. It mm -hmm. doesn't, you don't have to spend 20 years reading into this field to think this just doesn't add up. You have one free society and everyone's trying to destroy it. And what you want to focus on is the number of trucks that get in or out and, and the stringency of how much they check for explosives and cement material in the trucks, because we know what that led to. Just the dropping of context of how we got here, the scale of the complicity of people in Gaza, which I think doesn't get enough attention. And and I think it's, it's it, you know, it's Ayn Rand's essays about the 50, the 60s and the 70s, and she's, she's talking about how bad things are. And you, you put that in the scale of today. I don't know how she would react to this. It's just, it's beyond belief that you could have documented murders and rapes on a mass scale. And what we're focused on is the Israelis are not giving enough notice to people. They're not allowing enough trucks in. How dare they defend themselves? And that is just a, that is a symptom of a culture that is really morally sick. Yeah, I, I, I really don't think, I mean, Ayn Rand wrote some of the most evil, horrible you know, uh, uh, villains in all of human literature. And she spoke about the evils of uh, of the left and pri primarily of the left in the 60s. And the, the student demonstrates, I don't think she could have imagined this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really, I don't, and I don't think people around today get how, how really, how really evil this is, the, the depths of evil. I mean, altruism has been around since Christianity and a lot of evil stuff. But in modern times, it, this is the most vicious manifestation of it that I've seen. Um, it, you know, the, the, the celebration of uh, rapists and, and, uh, and mass murderers. Uh, and, I, you know, if you go historically, there have been lots of examples that are, that are just as bad or worse. But in modern times, over the last 200 years, I, I, you know, other than the Nazis and the communists, well, the communists really go hundreds of millions. I, but this is up there with that, and this is in the West. This is in the this is in this is the good guys. This is in the right in the place of good good people. Uh, I wanted to, to raise one more thing about campus because I, I went by that quickly, but I, I want to share an anecdote from the last couple of weeks. I, I I was invited to a few campuses to speak in the last few months. I'm not going to tell you which campus this is happening in. But I was invited to speak at a campus and I was going back and forth with the, the student group that is sponsoring or wanted to sponsor the event. And they wanted me to speak this month. And I thought, well, the natural thing to talk about on campus is this is the, the big issue. And there's things to say about the encampments and the things to say about uh, Israel and the conflict and how to understand it. And when they got back to me after having a committee meeting, they said, uh, the, sorry, I should add that the other thing I told them is, as a rule, I don't speak on campus without security. That, that's just been true for at least a decade now. It's just not sensible. And my, my wife would not be happy if I did that. So, and it's been justified in, on other cases. And I said that just as, an, you know, as a precaution, they need to tell security, they need to tell the campus police. And that's a condition. And I, I hope they're okay with that. When they got back to me, they were eager for me to speak, but they decided that's not a topic that they feel comfortable with because at this campus, and it's not one that you've heard about in the news, there has already been turmoil because some students have said things positive about Israel and negative, and there's there's concerns on campus. And, and again, <laughs> this is where we are. 
uh, at a fairly well-respected university, the students just said, well, can we talk about something else? And I said, I I'm fine, I'll talk about something else. I don't want to put you in a position where you're, you're in trouble or you're a threat because that's the climate that you can't, it, it, students are afraid to bring a speaker like me to present a position on Israel that given the kind of climate that exists on campus. Now that is really sinister to me. No, I've I've experienced that for the last year. I, I've offered myself to many campuses to come and speak on Israel and everybody's turned me down. And And usually it's the university saying, well, you know, we need security and that will cost too much money and uh, we're not sure we want, you know, it, it's it's controversial. Um, so, and then often it's just the students just not wanting the aggravation uh, mm -hmm. to, to handle it. But yes, outside is in a sense silenced by the unwillingness of university campuses to protect our free, freedom of speech, uh, to protect the students' freedom of speech by inviting us. And uh, it, it really is horrific.